Welcome to the Heal Your Heartbreak podcast with your host, Breakup Bestie, aka me, Kendra. Breakups are hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Each week, I will be taking you through a different topic as it relates to breaking up, healing from heartbreak, growing in your single life, dating, and getting back into happier and healthier relationships. The goal of this show is to provide support, hope, tips, and to remind you that above all, this too shall pass. Hello again, and welcome to the Heal Your Heartbreak podcast. I am so happy to have you guys here. And today we're going to talk about anger and anger, how it relates to breakups, kind of going through some of my old beliefs that I used to hold about anger and how I was able to transform those to use to my advantage during a breakup. And I'll talk about this in the episode, but anger can get a really bad rap. And I actually think it's a really healthy and really good thing to feel and experience after a breakup. So we are going to get into all of that today. And I wanted to give you another reminder about our private Facebook group, the Breakup Bestie Support Group. Tons of women in there that are sharing experience. They are sharing the most amazing quotes and tips. And it's just, again, I have to brag again, it's just such a beautiful group. So if you are not already in there, be sure that you join. Um, The link is again in the show notes. So let's get into today's episode on anger. And I just mentioned this briefly, but I grew up thinking that anger was a really bad emotion. And to not to bash at all of my parents, but they, anytime I felt upset or angry about something, they would always ask me to see it from the other person's perspective. And they would have me turn to gratitude instead of anger, which are all amazing coping skills and great tools that they equipped me with. However, what was communicated to me was that anger is not okay. Anger is a bad emotion. Anytime that comes up, you need to turn it into something positive. You need to cut other people slack, which in a lot of ways is a helpful way to look at things. However, what happened was I didn't feel, I didn't think it was okay to feel anger. Therefore, I didn't really feel anger. And as any human being, I had things happen to me that realistically should have sparked anger. And instead of feeling that, I would push it aside. I would shove it down. I really just avoided that feeling at all costs. And it ended up having some repercussions later on, which I think that's true with any emotion that we suppress. It comes up later on, like the beach ball analogy. If you try to shove a beach ball underwater, it's going to come out sideways and not the way that you plan or expect it to. So that's why I really wanted to do this episode on anger because it's something that I really struggled with and it was something that I didn't discover until honestly my like most recent breakup. And once I was able to embrace it and see it for what it was, it ended up serving and helping me a ton. So why is anger actually good to go through during a breakup. A breakup is, however you slice it, it's a traumatic, in my opinion, it's a traumatic experience. Are there more traumatic experiences in the world? Absolutely. However, I don't like to get into that comparative suffering kind of thing. And I talked about this on my stories, but if you haven't listened to Brene Brown's podcast episode on comparative suffering, please go do it. But no matter how you slice it, a breakup is a traumatic experience. There are more than likely things that happened during the relationship or during the breakup that cause anger. So it's a very natural thing to come up when something was taken from you and you didn't want it to be. If something did, if someone did something to wrong you, it's very natural to feel anger. So anger is just a really natural byproduct of a breakup. And so it's really important that we learn how to recognize it, 
what to do with it if we have it, what not to do with it if we have it. So I want you to kind of reprogram your thinking that it's okay to feel angry at your ex. And I also want to say that when you feel angry at your ex, it's actually a lot easier to be able to let them go. When you just feel sad about the breakup, which that's going to come to, it's a lot harder to let the person go. So if you can recognize, wow, I feel angry at this person, it does make it a little bit easier to be able to let them go. I recognize that there are certain breakup situations that are a lot easier to see and recognize the anger, uh, cheating, um, lying. There's, you know, there are going to be certain examples where it's a lot easier to feel anger towards your ex. And there are also going to be breakups where nothing dramatic happened. And maybe the other person didn't wrong you. They just said like, this isn't meant to be. So I have gone through, you know, the last breakup I went through, I didn't feel anger and I, I wanted to feel anger. But to me, the relationship on the surface seemed perfect. But it just ended up being that we weren't meant to be. So it was just really sad. And if you find yourself in a situation like that where you're not feeling anger and by all means the relationship looked really good, you're just really devastated that it ended, that's natural. In the beginning, you're going to feel a huge sense of loss, of grieving. Really with any breakup, you're going to feel a huge sense of loss and grieving. But what I found, and using my own breakup as an example, is my last breakup, again, I wanted to feel angry, but I didn't. I just felt really sad because the relationship seemed really good. However, you know, I did all the things that I talk about on this show to heal myself, to make myself feel better. But the more I really dug and the more I did the healing and the more I processed the relationship, what started to pop up were things that did make me angry and things that I thought, wow, I really don't want that in a relationship. So for example, he had a wall up the entire time we were together. So he wasn't emotionally there during the relationship. And, you know, there were some things he wasn't super accepting of. So the more I like really just stuck with my healing and focused on myself, the more things that popped up that did cause me anger. And so once they came up and I didn't force it, it just kind of naturally came up. Then I was able to feel that anger and let that go. Because remember, anger is one of the stages of grieving and going through a breakup is a grieving process. So it is important to hit that milestone in, in the grieving process. So Don't be afraid of it. Don't force it if it doesn't come right away. My guess is that it will come at some point if you are being really intentional and reflective on the relationship. So just have patience and it will come up when it's ready to come up. And if you want to feel anger, but you don't feel it yet, that's okay. That's totally natural, especially if nothing dramatic happened. And if something dramatic did happen, Um, We're going to talk a little bit later on what to do once you are feeling those feelings. If you are looking for even more help and guidance on your breakup, you can get my step-by-step healing process using my courses. No matter where you might feel stuck in your breakup, there is a course for you. If your breakup just happened and you feel completely overwhelmed by the intense feelings, you can get all the tools to get started with my breakup emergency first aid kit. If you feel like you can't stop reaching out to your ex, checking their social media, or obsessing about them, you can get all the tools and accountability you need from Detox Your Ex. If some time has passed after your breakup, but you still feel like you can't let go of it, I can help you let go of your ex using my Breakthrough Your Breakup course. If you feel like you might be ready to start dating again, but you're scared to get hurt again or don't trust yourself to date yet, I will give you everything you need to feel confident moving forward in my Moving On After Heartbreak course. If you want all of these things to take you from beginning to end after a breakup, you can grab my signature course, Heal Your Breakup. All of my courses include videos from me, a workbook, and my breakup journal to help you feel supported and guided through this process. Head to the link in my show notes to take the quiz and find out which course is best for you so you can start moving on, healing, and feeling happy again. Now back to the episode. 
Now I wanted to talk about the difference between anger and resentments. So they're both along the same line, and but there is a really big difference, and I think the difference really lies in the long-term effects. So anger is an emotion. It's a very healthy emotion. It typically will come up. We will cope with it or deal with it or express it in one way or another. But if we are able to feel the feeling, express what we need to, sit with it for a little bit, it'll pass. Whereas on the other hand, a resentment can be really toxic, especially in the long term. So I heard this definition of a resentment. And if you look at the word resentment, if you look at it as resent, meaning a resentment is typically something that you haven't let go of. And it just keeps popping up, keeps popping up. Like every week you're thinking about how that person wronged you, how mad you still are about that. And once something turns into a resentment, it's a lot harder to let it go. And it can, I mean, I've seen people with resentments for decades and it just continues to take up space in their heads. So you really want to make sure that whatever you're feeling angry about doesn't turn into a resentment because resentments are things that can leave us in that victim role for years. And I think having resentments are another huge obstacle for being able to let something go. So be sure to keep in mind the difference between anger and resentment. It's totally okay to feel angry, but if you feel like there is something that you've been angry about for a long time. It could even be like from three relationships ago. You never know what you're really holding on to, but it's important to uncover those. And that's why it's so important to feel anger when it comes up instead of suppressing it like I talked about I used to do. Because when we don't feel it, then it's a lot more likely to turn into a resentment. So Let's touch on that a little bit more about what happens when you don't acknowledge your anger. To share this, um, I'm going to share a little bit of a story that happened with me, a little bit of an example. So as you guys know from listening to this podcast from 18 to 21, I was in a relationship with a very toxic and abusive man. A lot of bad things happened, um, financial, stealing, um, control, manipulation, abuse, just all the yucky things that can happen in a relationship. So by all means, once that relationship ended, it was, you know, it probably would have been very normal and natural for me to be really angry about it because there were a lot of things that happened that should have made me angry. But I still had that same old belief that I shouldn't be angry. I blamed myself a ton, which I'm going to touch on that after this, kind of feeling that anger and resentment towards yourself. So I blamed myself. I never got angry at him. And what ended up happening was about a year and a half after we broke up, there's... um, Kind of a long story, probably for another episode, but I had his car was in my name. He wasn't paying the bills like he said he was. And so I ended up taking back the car. I like repossessed it from him. And I finally, after it sat at my apartment for about four months, I finally decided I needed to go through the car so I could do something with it. So started going through his stuff and I saw a picture of him and another woman that I always had this suspicion that they were together. So I found that picture and for whatever reason, that was the straw that broke the camel's back and just sent me into like a blind rage. I, he had like paintings in the back of his car. I was like smashing the paintings over my knee I started tearing up like everything in there. I was like throwing clothes everywhere and I was in the parking structure of my apartment complex. So not necessarily the most appropriate place to have that kind of a freak out, but I just went into this blind rage and all of the anger that I was holding for years came up in that one moment. And I think that happens to people a lot. That's why people go through these huge overreactions and you know, if I, I've learned that if I'm having a reaction disproportionate to the actual situation, it means that 
I'm reacting not just to the situation, but maybe months or years of other things. It's more of like a historical kind of thing. So that's what happens when we don't properly express our anger is that we tend to have it explode at maybe not the most opportune times. And a lot of the time too, it can erupt onto the person that doesn't deserve it. So I've seen it where people never dealt with the anger issues from maybe three relationships ago. And so it ends up getting taken out on their current partner because they never took the time to process and reflect on on that anger. So it's very, very important that we do recognize anger as it comes up. Very healthy to express it in healthy ways, which I will share some healthy ways to express that anger. But before I get into that, I wanted to talk about what happens when that anger is on ourselves or those resentments are towards ourselves. That is a huge thing that most people deal with. And I think if you were to write down all the resentments that you have towards anyone in your life, the most that you would resent is yourself. So that's why it's really important that we not only acknowledge the resentments we have towards ourselves. So that's like a great writing assignment to do is why are you mad at yourself? Especially after a relationship that didn't work, we tend to go towards blaming ourselves and all the things we believe we did wrong. So it's important to kind of take an inventory of those and take a look at it. And then like be really kind and gentle on yourself and forgive yourself for all of those things because typically what we perceive as being something really bad that we did is in the grand scheme of things, not that big of a deal. And when something's taken from us, it's really easy for us to get out like the hyper microscope and take a look at all of the things that we should have done differently. But I believe nothing happens in this world by mistake. So whatever you said, whatever you did, make sure you forgive yourself because I think that's the most destructive resentment we can have is one towards ourselves. So When you are taking a look at some of the areas that you feel angry in your life or some of the people you feel angry, anger towards in your life, make sure you also take out the mirror and look at what you're feeling towards yourself and express that and move through it. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is what are some healthy coping skills when you are experiencing anger? So, you know, I've talked a lot about why it's why it's important to express anger but how do we do that in a way that's not destructive because there are definitely plenty of ways to do it in a destructive way meaning expressing your anger very directly t- towards the other person in full screaming mode we don't want to do that so the first thing anytime now like i have my kind of process now when i feel anger towards another person so the first thing i always do is i write I will write down what I'm feeling and a great tool that was suggested to me that I highly, highly recommend. It's actually a part of my course is writing an FU letter, not to send, never send them, but like really getting emotional and writing down exactly what you're feeling. Like don't hold back, use all the F bombs, just let it rip and then that takes a lot of the emotion out of it. And then we can kind once we get that high emotion out of the way, we can kind of take a look at what are some of the underlying reasons that you're feeling angry. And a lot of the time that's kind of enough to just get it out of your head. However, if you feel like you then need to like express that anger towards someone else, which by the way, if it is your ex, don't do this. Don't follow these next steps. Like leave it in a letter, read it to a friend so you can fully get it off your chest and then leave it. But, you know, if it's like a friend or a family member or a loved one, I would then call someone and kind of run through what I'm feeling and again get down to that root reason where I'm not just blaming the other person, I'm just expressing what I'm feeling. So I will kind of run through it with someone else and then, you know, Once I get to a point where I'm not feeling heated, my dad always told me that if you absolutely feel like you have to tell someone something to someone right now, you don't like wait 24 hours, pause, and then you can bring it up. So 
that's always a great rule that I have lived by. Another great like coping skill, which mind you, this is not going to sound super healthy, but I have found it to work. But someone suggested that if I'm feeling so angry towards someone and I can't shake it, write their name on a piece of duct tape, tear it off, stick it to the bottom of your shoe and walk around on their name all day. It's like this really weird cathartic way that we can express anger. And that was recommended by a mentor. And this was around the same time where I started learning that anger was an okay thing to feel. So I was like, oh my gosh, I can do that. I can write an FU letter. I can walk around with someone's name on the bottom of my shoe. It seemed so foreign and so like, quote unquote, bad. But once I started doing it, I felt so much lighter. I felt like I was not letting things get stuck inside me. So there are a couple other things. Exercise is a great way, in my opinion, to express anger. Uh, Kickboxing, um, just any kind of boxing or something to like really get those. I think sometimes physical movement is such a good way to get blocked emotions out of us. Just it's a great, great release. So kickboxing, like picture their face as the punching bag. I don't know if you guys have ever done those like ball slams using those wall balls, but I've done that where I like picture it as someone's head, like slamming it. So it's okay to like have those kinds of thoughts where you're like, I want to punch that person in the face. But if you're able to then acknowledge like, Hey, I'm feeling this. It's okay that I'm feeling this. And then expressing it in a healthy way that doesn't involve the actual other person Like that's so much better than just sitting in denial that you don't feel anger at all. And then like tear, you know, write a letter and tear it up or like scream into a pillow or punch a pillow. Like there are ways that we can do that individually. Um, I think venting to friends is really important too. If your friend has the emotional capacity to handle a venting session, I think that's also very important. My girlfriends and I which I love. Well, you know, if I feel like I need to vent about something, I'll text one of them and say like, Hey, um, can I vent to you about something and, and, you know, give them that opportunity to welcome it or say like, I I can't right now. So to recap, anger is a really great and healthy emotion. I think it is. I personally think it is necessary to fully heal through a breakup and be able to let go of the other person. I will do a follow-up episode on forgiveness because that is really the next step, but it's important to feel the anger that you're feeling and express it in a healthy way so it doesn't end up turning into a resentment and taking up a mental space in your life for years to come. And it's okay to write an FU letter and use a lot of F-bombs. It's okay to you know, stomp on their name for an entire day. It's okay to picture their face as a punching bag in your boxing class. So don't feel bad about any of those things. I spent so much of my life hiding my anger and suppressing my anger. And it's a miracle that it didn't turn into explosions more often than it did. But I want you to focus on that on the next week. Again, pick up your journal and do some writing. I'm sure you have noticed a pattern on here that I pretty much tell you to journal every single episode. And I probably will continue to do that through all of the episodes because it is so important. So I want you to give that a shot this week and I will see you on this show next week. I hope you enjoyed today's show. If you loved it, I hope you'll leave me a review and share with your friends. If you're interested in learning more about my course, Heal Your Breakup, where I take you step-by-step through my entire healing process, you can find more info at my website, breakupbestie.com. And if you're new, don't forget to join our private Facebook group so you can connect with other women going through the same thing and seek support. You can search Breakup Bestie Support Group on Facebook to join. Lastly, if you're not already following me on Instagram, I share new tips and support every single day. You can find me at your breakup bestie. Most importantly, hang in there, stay connected with loved ones, be nice to yourself, and remember, it's all going to be okay. I promise.